welcome everyone to another Cyber Lounge Coffee Chat. This time we're joined by Lisa. Uh, so Lisa, do you want to introduce yourself? Yes, my name is Lisa Kiss. I'm a lead cybersecurity consultant for Cybercare, which deals with um, vulnerable women and paying clients. Mm -hmm. yeah. And of course, we have Holly from the Cyber Lounge. Hello. <laughs> yeah, so Holly, you're in uh, an interesting place today, right? Yes, I'm in Hotel Gotham. Awesome, awesome. So um, we're streaming from from luxury today. Um, and what about what what everyone's drinking? So I have, what is it, Holly? The, the pod. Uh, vanilla <laughs> macchiato. Vanilla macchiato. I'm going to try. Ooh, okay. Uh, what about you, Lisa? That's like a small flex. I've got um, iced caramel soy latte. Hmm. I think that's what I. I don't know. Whatever you call it, Starbucks. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Holly? I've just got a standard cappuccino. Standard mm. cappuccino. They're, they're really good from there, though, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. So it's a big step up from the last few weeks where we've all had water or regular coffee. Definitely. Orange fresh oh. from the juicer. Mm -hmm. that, that sounds good. So what, welcome, Izad. Um, welcome, Shamila. Um, so obviously the topic today is women in cybersecurity, and it's something we've talked about before, but it's something that always, I think is always valuable to discuss. Um, and we really want to get Lisa's perspective on this. Yeah. So um, would you like to kick things off, Lisa? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I obviously have gone through the university route, so I haven't really seen how much tech people know, and my family is in IT as well. Um, and I didn't really have a perspective before joining Cybercare on what modern sort of hacking looks like, because it's not hacking as in like, you know, we have platforms like Hack the Box. That's not what real hacking is nowadays, is literally that they have access to their emails, their Apple ID, and yeah, it's, and what sort of... Um, organizations are avail available to approach for help mm -hmm. um yeah it's all about that and also i feel like the it community is sort of um gatekeepers you know we don't really get taught actual helpful it in education you get taught how to do a html website well that's not going to be very helpful um and how there's a big jump from like Apple geniuses to like a degree. Yeah. To sort of mm -hmm. about that. Um, yeah, and just making people aware that it, it does happen and it doesn't happen to dumber people or less educated. It happens to doctors, um, app specialists. So it's not, it's not something uncommon. Of course, yeah. We, we, we kind of talk time and time again, and Holly can obviously attest to this, about the awareness in cyber and how it, it's such a key thing and, and it's, so, it's missing uh, in so many places and there's so many different ways to build awareness. So what would you say, Lisa, is, is one of the key ways that you can build awareness around this subject? I think um, really just talking about it and making people aware, like if you give someone, when someone sets up your phone, fresh out of the box is usually I think like predominantly in a heterosexual relationship is like a man's job but then he's gonna have access to everything that can be used negatively in the future of malicious intent um so yeah I think it's just making awareness and realizing just like phishing is probably a lot more prevalent in actual hacking communities than actual, you know, Kylie Linux style. Um, yeah, and just sort of like what organizations are there. Uh, there are so many, some will even help you get new phones. Um, some get sent to us um, as CyberCare. Yep. And yeah, you have caseworkers. I, I didn't realize there was so much out there because I don't know. You don't know it until you need it, I guess. Yeah, yeah, and then when you need it, you desperately, desperately yeah. need it. Right? 
Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Interesting. And so you, you've talked about the different kinds of resources. So what, what would some of those look like? Um, some of them, so if you are part of a, say you're Jewish and you have Jew, Jewish women's aid, you have certain council ones, so different boroughs have different ones. So I work with Barna Council. Mm -hmm. um, so I liaise with them and they have Solace Aid. That's what they're called. Um, we've even had some come from, and I didn't know you could do this. It comes, there's like a caseworker at the hospital. So it looks like you're going to see the doctor, but really you're going to see a caseworker. And then they'll call us from the, that office. But if someone can track your movement, it still looks like you went to the hospital. That's a really um, good idea. It is. And I, I don't know how, what organization that comes through. But it's especially good for people where they think they're being stalked or they don't really know what's going on. Um, we also have a lot of clients, especially in the older generations, where this whole IT is sort of like mystify, like witchcraft. And they don't, they see hacking films where, you know, they type two lines and they're like, we're in. But you're not in. <laughs> It, yeah. It's a lot more difficult. Um, so yeah, we, we actually deal a lot with like re-education um, and helping them understand like it's okay. Um, we had a client that would um, freak out when she got um, notifications. She was like, what's going on? And I was like, no, that's a notification. Like, it's just telling you like, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so I definitely think we need to make sure that the younger generation also understand how it works. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because else we're not going to be able to move forward and just really told about the different side effects we can have like the Snapchat and stuff like that. So I think we're also working on creating a program with, for that. I was actually going to ask about that, um, but first I just want to ask if anyone in the chat has any questions uh, for, for Lisa or any of us, uh, make sure to ask them now and we'll get to them shortly. So with um, TikTok especially rising so quickly and, and there being so many security issues around that, have you found that to be kind of a, a culprit? Um, it sort of can be because with TikTok, you can see the background. So even if it's not really it's not really giving away information if i do a dance on the street and it's and someone knows me they probably know where i live or even if i take a video of my window they'll know my location so if i'm trying to you know not disclose my location it's not going to work really well um so we did have a couple just about to do a location that people found out where uh, certain people moved to or they you know, they saw in a cousin's TikTok that that person they're looking for is in it. Um, so yeah, it is a big problem, but I feel like Instagram is a lot worse with like geotagging. Oh, of course, yeah. Um, yeah, I, TikTok isn't a huge problem yet. I think there's a lot worse problems with them. Yeah, so like yeah. things like Snapchat, Sorry, Holly, go ahead. To, I was literally just about to say the same thing. Snap maps on Snapchat, you know, younger people yeah. especially yeah. will add anyone. Um, and obviously you can see exactly where you are um, yeah. you know, at, at the time. And I don't think um, maybe the older generations that don't have Snapchat are just so unaware that their child could be. Um, yeah. They have a, a stranger on Snapchat. I know exactly where they are at any time. Yeah. And see who they like friends with. Yeah. I remember when I had Snapchat, I, I probably had location services on, to be honest. But so did all your friends, so. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. You just don't think twice about it, really. Yeah. Everyone has it on. Yeah, you don't want to be the odd one out. Yeah, but it is super scary when you, um, you, know, you think about you could have anyone on there, really. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. At Facebook, we had a couple of... Um, scams uh we had clients come through that but in terms of facebook you know as long as you it depends because we did have a client whose ex was like stalking her 
and he was abroad and he just kept creating new fake profiles and curating them for like months. Like she, he would slowly add all of her friends. Um, so I think it's definitely worthwhile thinking about having Facebook for that reason. Mm -hmm. And also because Facebook, so. I mean, they did buy WhatsApp, but yeah, I wouldn't recommend it. Yeah. Why is this an argument? So, um, yes, yeah, so Luke asks, um, uh, just so everyone knows, why is this technology being implemented when it has such a high risk for the consumer? Really Do you question. mean like Snapchat? Like the uh, Snapchat I think it means maps? the Snapchat maps, the, the geo tagging, and so on. I honestly think it's because the same way you go to a nice restaurant and you take a picture and then you tag them, just to let everyone know, you know, I went there. And I think it's the same thing with like on Snap maps. Like, you can see where everyone is and you're like, oh, I go out so much. I think it's, you know, you're trying to be part of an online community and also make yourself look better on online to all of your friends. Um, I think it's just that, it's just human pick me behavior. I think. Yeah, I think on Instagram as well with the geotagging, a lot of people, um, in, you're in sort of the influencer, World, you get more likes if you tag a um, yeah a restaurant or a place to get more your your post out there. Um, yeah. So you'd be you know wanting to put that um, tag on to get more engagement with your posts. Yeah, absolutely. And especially with the hashtags, you can go really really specific. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think it's it's not really peer pressure, but it is essentially that you know you want to just show that you're. You have a life, I guess. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I really doubt that any of these people posting uh, these things have any idea that they're giving away the location, uh, they're giving away the favorite restaurants. That, in, in some cases, showing their street uh, or house yeah. number. Um, yeah. That they have no idea uh, the thousands of people that are watching them. That any of them could be. Um, a potential threat, I suppose. Uh, yeah. so Natalia says, I think it has its co uh, cons and pros. Uh, and the bad side, geolocation can serve as identifying where the suspect uh, was if something happened. But on the other side, uh, cyber stalking is completely the opposite. So yeah, um, I, I guess, is there an element of with geolocation? Um, I mean, it is. Try, yeah, kind of like Everything. the Uber share. Yeah. Yeah, you can like share so you can follow along someone's ride. But I do think it, for women especially, it is good if you know you are sort of tracked because if you do go missing, they know where to start from. Mm -hmm. um, for example, I know this is going to be controversial, but I have an Amazon Alexa because one, it's really handy. I can turn my lights on and off. Amazing, witchcraft. Um, two is that it does actually keep the recordings up in a cloud and they have been used in like murder cases um, to solve it, to see if it's a murder suicide or murder murder. Um, I guess it's just making sure you know who has access to um, yeah. see where you are. Yeah, 100%. Um, and also I think a lot of people also post stuff immediately because obviously now we have stories which is where you like update it and it goes away. But if you say you go out and you keep posting where you are in that second, someone could also stalk you that way, um, which is probably worse. I don't know. Yeah. And so with the, with the awareness of, the, of this, where do you think that it should start? When should, um, when should girls be, be told um, the consequences of posting these kind of things or the, or the potential dangers? Um, I think it should be like, same thing as many other things. It should be taught from an early age. You shouldn't mm -hmm. be fear mongering, but you should let them know like, under 18, one, you don't really have a lot of choice. Like you're a minor, calm down. Um, and just sort of taught like, oh, just explain the technology and they can make up their mind. I feel like so many people are like, yeah, it's geolocations, but so. Um, 
So it is actually quite important to just make them aware of what is happening, give them the age, not age, sorry. Um, what was I gonna say? Give them the resources to do what they want to do with that information. Yeah. Definitely from young, like three, I don't know. They do have iPads though. I see most kids with iPads. Yeah. Those can do geolocations as well. Um, especially if they're adding like, I don't know, is that still like Club Penguin? <laughs> no, not anymore. Think... <laughs> no? Okay, no, well, whatever, whatever the next one is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so with that, obviously these companies, these giant companies are launching these features. Mm -hmm. Are they providing enough information about turning on like snap maps and so and such is are they providing um not exactly a warning but but letting people know that, that what they're doing i think they do let people know but again there's so much in there like you know it's like pages and pages no one's going to be able to read that um especially younger people and i feel like um the, the age range of like people that are currently having kids is like older millennials. So they probably don't really have much experience with Snapchat mm -hmm. um, as it was relatively new. I'm sure they know about like Facebook that's been around for ages. Um, it's difficult because they do tell you you can turn it on and off. So at the end of the day, it is your choice. Um, but I think it definitely should be, I don't know, maybe delayed, like delay the, when it gets updated. So like if you move from space to space, maybe like leave an hour if they had like a time limit or something. Mm -hmm. I feel like that would be good. Um, but also mistakes are gonna happen and people are gonna do it just because everyone else is doing it. So it's difficult. What is the question? Yeah. And did, did you, uh, has there been any noticeable increase in, in this kind of, I know people have been traveling less, um, but as a result of, of the lockdowns and so on, people have been on social more, I think, and been online more. Have you, uh, what is the difference uh, there? Have you noticed anything? Um, we have noticed an increase in actual domestic behavior, abuse behavior. Um, I mean, I'm pretty sure that Crime statistics also reflect that. So um, I think it's been more about money because pandemic. Um, so it's been more about money side. So it's more been like financial gains and more again, just like adding their devices to that, to the victims like um, Gmail or whatever. So they have access to it. So it hasn't really been like geolocation-y, it's been more financial, which makes sense. Mm -hmm. Doesn't make it right, but it does make sense. Yeah. I, I don't know if it's related, but I have noticed far, far more Instagram, uh, people on Instagram are making their profiles private. Um, a lot of my friends, for example, have switched their profile over to private, so they're keeping that information hidden, and, and you obviously have to accept someone, right, to, to follow up. So I think the there might not be an, there's not enough of a change, but there is a small change there. Yeah, but at the same time, are they gonna accept all the all the follows, or are they not? I, I guess it depends why they set it to private in the first place. Are they doing it to keep themselves protected, or, or are they just uh, doing stuff they don't want their employers to see? Potentially, yeah. I, I guess there's a couple of different ways that could go. Yeah. Um, so Shamila said, uh, do you think tech companies or digital businesses are getting better at listening to security people? No, definitely not. There's so much like, even on LinkedIn, there's so many articles about like, why you should like hire professionals to help you. And they still don't listen because I think people just like, like not listening to people that know what they're talking about. 
they just, you know, they get hacked or they have a security breach and then they do the little Pikachu face and they're so surprised, like, oh my God, why did it happen? Well, you were told. Yeah. Um, so I think probably well in the next like 10 years, we're thought right now. We what did, do you guys think? We did speak on a recent event about how how hard it is for for consultants to, to get businesses to understand the, the cyber and one of the ways they went about that was by mapping out what the damage would look like because obviously you can't show them the result of a cyber attack until they've been hit by one at which point it's already too late um so, so that was one of the ways they went about that uh what do you think holly pardon i'm sorry what i had a think... <laughs> no worries what do you think about um how tech companies and businesses are listening to security professionals I think I speak with a lot of people, um, consultants who get quite frustrated that they're you know, telling these companies what they need to do, um, what they should be doing to protect themselves, and they are, and they don't have the budget to do what they're saying, or um, just just aren't really taking it on board, and that can be really frustrating for them um, when they're not not being listened to. Of course, yeah. Hundred percent. So following on from that, Shamila. Um, said how well uh, are women trusted in conversations around security and protection i mean if we even look at sort of like broader as it for example ar or yeah ar um devices are not actually suited for like women's sizes like the eye distance is wrong for women so we, we can get especially like car sick or seasick uh, which is a big problem when it comes to AR potentially being used in medicine and like education. It's just going to really hinder the process of, you know, of like a student. If you feel car sick or seasick sick every single time you go to a lecture, you're not really going to succeed at it that well. Um, so coming back from that, a lot of women have been speaking on it and I have, I don't think there's any change. Um, women, you know, I would say that it's still a very male dominated industry. I think on our team of actual like IT people, it's just me and Natalia actually. Um, there's no one else that's a woman. Um, so I don't know if it's because there's not enough like of a sample size or it's because women are still not regarded as highly as men. So. What, are your, what are your thoughts, Holly? Um, yeah, I think it's still uh, yeah, male dominated for sure. Where do you think that starts? Would you would you say that's from education and IT or cyber being seen as a sort of male subject? Definitely, I think it's, it starts from education, uh, and you're not really encouraged, or it's mostly seen as like a geeky thing or that thing to be interested in computers. And it's only now that Silicon Valley has sort of gone cooler and it looks sort of inviting, you know. Um, it, yeah, it definitely starts from education, but there are a lot of um, secondary school education programs at the moment. There's like She Codes and different ones where they're trying to get young girls interested and involved in the future of ID. What do you think, Molly? Yeah, I've seen a lot of... Um like cyber competitions for girls at schools um you have good prizes to get them involved which is which is really good to see nice. definitely um, and yeah. luke, sorry I was, go gonna, I was gonna say the same madam you go <laughs> <laughs> so luke asked how would you go around about educating uh, the parents of the children's social presence um it's difficult because you can't just tell especially like gen alpha kids you can't go on the internet or you know you can't have this and that because they will go around you um so you can't really scare parents because then they're going to be like absolutely not not until you're 18. What, um, uh, sorry what age group is gen alpha is that the newest one it's from like 2010 oh, okay. so they'd be like 12 no 11. right right i so remember 2011 it does not <laughs> That was not 10 years ago. I don't know how many years ago it was, but it wasn't. Yeah. Um, so your Gen Alpha would be like um, primary, 
secondary school, primary mm-hmm. secondary school kids. Um, so yeah, you can't you can't be among the parents. But at the same time, you can't just go, say like, oh, just go, let your kid do whatever. Like there is on Netflix and where else is it? There's like children modes. Yeah, like YouTube has one. Um, yeah. that have its own issues for quite a while, I believe. Yeah, and there are some programs that can track what your child is doing. Um, I had a client that asked me to do that for them. Um, I don't personally believe that's ethical to track your ch- child's movements because they're just going to have trust issues in the pro- in the future. Like it's not solving the problem. Um, and most of them are American based. They either do nothing or they do too much as to like, you can turn on the camera, you can hear stuff. When you're thinking about that technology being on a young person's phone, it's a, it's a bit much. Um, so coming back to that, um, I think you need to educate the children. Um, I think the parents, you know, they need, to, I mean, the parents know for sure, like who doesn't know? But I think educating the children would be best because then they can make up their own minds about social media and how to use it. What do you guys think? I do remember when I when these platforms were first start of, start of coming out, MySpace, Facebook and so on, there were, were rules about the age you have to be to sign up. I, I believe it was 13 for most of them. I don't know if they still have that. Um, yeah, but, but that's that, why you have... Sorry, that's why you have some people that on their profiles, it looks like they're 25 because they signed up when they were 10. I I did that one. <laughs> I did, you can just change the age. Yeah, you can. You know, it's not really, you know, stopping anyone from from signing up if they are under under 13. You can just Google how old you need to be to be over 13 <laughs> and just put that as your birthday and then yeah. off you go. Yeah. Well, yeah, so, so maybe there should be more with that more like an explanation of why you should be 13 to uh, join uh, or at least the risks um because if kids are signing up to all these new social platforms and they're just springing up all over the place uh yeah but for facebook it's actually good if there's a lot of profiles because Mm -hmm. then the ad revenue looks like it's like reaching this many how many profiles yeah there's actually a big thing about um apparently there's I think a third of the Facebook profiles are fake. Um, but it's that. thought that actually it's Facebook that created it. So it seems like they have a much bigger reach. Yeah. Sorry, my dog's in the background stretching. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> He's on his back, like a little dead roach. So elegant. <laughs> Was it Instagram um, who were sorry discussing um, a under thirteen sort of separate Instagram? Oh yeah, yes. Which just oh. you know, what happens if you're over thirty, and you know, yeah, you're one of those people that wants to see children, and it's going to just make it like a fun pool for you. Definitely. Oh yes, yeah, so. Uh, Sorry, Shamila, uh, we can, we've got time for this one last question before we close off. So it might be a good question for both of you, actually. Uh, Shamila posted in, in the group. <clears throat> so it was, uh, just tips on entering the European market, specifically as a, uh, Germany as a woman in the security slash IT sector. She moved from Australia. I believe she's in Germany right now. Okay. I'm Hungarian, uh, so maybe I can help. Um, <laughs> I personally went through the uni route. I would just say, especially with LinkedIn, um, make your online presence known. LinkedIn is the new Facebook for older people. Um, It literally looks like Facebook for starters. Um, So I would say go on LinkedIn, network. If there's any events near you or online events that you can go to that actually interest you, um, look up if there's any like women, German women and IT or something like that. There's some um, UK ones or if you are, if you know like a specific um, like Cisco, Cisco has a women thing as well. Um, just really try and network. And also 
you can see there's any volunteer opportunities to help out um like charities with it might help you with that and that's all the tips i have what about what about you holly i agree i'd say networking is definitely the biggest thing maybe a like a, like you said a support group for for women trying to do the same thing in um your location i guess it might be, might be worth having a a chat with one of our our consultants that that work in germany um to see if they could help you out i did uh, i just sent over to shamila um an event we ran previously with naomi about using linkedin uh to boost your profile and get more notice um yeah. but i believe shamila is connected with akash so that might be a great place to start he's uh he's, he's very good at what he does um, he is he's sat right there actually <laughs> Um, so that's uh, all we have time for today. I uh, just want to say a huge thank you to the audience uh, for showing up as always. Uh, obviously, thank you to Holly and uh, our guest speaker, Lisa. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. All right, we, we have an event on Tuesday, um, which I will send over to everyone. So you can, you can have a look at that and hopefully sign up and we'll, we'll see you there. But otherwise, have a great weekend. You too. Bye. Bye.